I always find that uh, very many students find algebra very difficult until at some point then they sort of get it and then it all makes sense. Uh, hopefully uh, you'll see that uh, very soon. Algebra is uh, a topic that yes, it does give people some problems, but um, it's all just about finding um, an unknown value. So for example, I could give uh, one like x plus five equals 12. So x would be my unknown letter. And in this case, uh, there's only, well, there's one obvious solution. Okay, so there's one value of x that makes this equation work. And remember the idea of an equation just means that, that this equal sign uh, tells you that the right side is equal to the left side. So that means 12 is equal to x plus something. Now a lot of teachers uh, show students certain ways of doing algebra, but there isn't really a right way or a wrong way. I mean, if you think about uh, algebra, the idea is just to find this letter x. So there's nothing wrong with you just guessing. For example, if you just kept guessing numbers until you got the right value that makes this work, so something plus five gives you 12. There's nothing wrong with that at all. That's just fine. I mean, there's just lots of ways of doing it. You could just keep guessing until it worked, or you can try all sorts of other ways. So I'm gonna show you a few um, yeah, tricks, I guess, but they're not necessarily the only ways of doing algebra. Lots of teachers show students how to do it lots of different ways, and they're not uh, necessarily better or worse, they're just different. But as long as you can end up with finding the value for x, you're fine. Now, does it always have to be x? No, it could be anything. I mean, we could be trying to find y or z or whatever letter you like, or if you're American, I guess you'd say z. Uh, I'm Canadian, so I say z. But in any case, it doesn't really matter. The idea is just to find what value works. So one trick I wanna show you is, um, first of all, when we look at these different uh, sides of the equation, on the right side, there's just one number. It's the number 12. On the left side, I could say that there's two terms. There's one term that's x, one term is five. When I talk about terms, I'm talking about things separated by either a plus or a minus. So there's one term and another term. And if two things are different terms, then you can get rid of them by doing the opposite. So one thing I like to think of is like this, this equal sign is almost like a little wall here. And in order to sort of cross the wall, you have to kind of pay the price and do the opposite. So for example, if you have x plus five, uh, a lot of teachers you know, show students how to do it, for example, that you could always arbitrarily add or subtract or multiply or divide the entire equation by anything you want, and it won't change it. For example, I could multiply everything by 2. As long as I did it to everything, there's no problem. It's the same equation. Just like I can add or subtract any numbers I want. Now watch what happens carefully if I decide to arbitrarily subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. So if I did x plus 5 equals 12, and I subtracted five from both equations. Subtracting five from five will leave nothing, and then that means subtracting five from 12 will give me something else. So I just wanna show you how we move things over, so to speak. So this plus five, I can sort of move it over by subtracting it. In other words, I could say x equals 12 minus five. That's the same thing. Just to show you all the work behind it, that's just because if I decide to do this, I could actually write this as this. x plus five minus five equals 12 minus five. You notice I did the minus five on both sides? As long as I do it on both sides of the equation, I do it for every single term, and I'm very careful about it, everything is just fine. So for example, this right here, five minus five canceled out, and that's why I was left with x equals 12 minus five. And that means then that I could write the whole equation then, well, x equals seven. So in this case right here, I've got my answer. You can always check if you did it right by putting it back into the equation. So for example, I can say that x equals seven, does that really work? Does seven plus five really give me 12? Absolutely it does, seven plus five is 12. So I know I did it right. The good news with a lot of algebra questions or problems is that you can actually know if you did it right just by plugging your answer back into the equation. I'm just trying to fix this up here. So that's one example. Now I'm going to be a little bit uh, quicker just to show you that, I mean, you can do minuses on both sides or pluses. You can multiply or divide by anything you like. So here's another example. What if I have uh, maybe the letter Y this time? So Y minus four equals negative one. And don't forget the Y could be anywhere. It could be the second term. It could be over here on the right. It could be anywhere you like. The idea is to find what number makes this all work. What value of Y makes this happen? Again, we can think of this is like, uh, this is a term here, this minus four. So if I wanna get rid of it, I do the opposite. So I move the minus four over and I add. So that's the opposite of subtracting. See, it's a minus four. So to move it over, I make it a plus four. 
So I have negative 1 plus 4. Therefore, I can say that y equals, well, negative 1 plus 4 is the same thing as 4 minus 1. And again, if you're ever not sure about uh, these sorts of things in your head, I always think of a number line where we go you know, bigger numbers to the right and smaller numbers to the left. This is 0. So I'm thinking of this. I start off at negative 1, and I add 4 to it. So I go to the right by 4, 2, 3, 4. See how I finish here at plus 3? So that's how I know that my answer is 3. There's lots of ways of visualizing this, but as long as you can do minus 1 plus 4 in your head, you're just fine. So that's 3. And again, does that value really work? Does 3 minus 4 really give you negative 1? It does. Let's do another one. So this time we'll do things with multiplying and dividing. So maybe I make it uh, the letter C. So 3C equals 2, let's just say. Now if I want to get C by itself, this time there's only one term on the left and one term on the right. So I can't just add or subtract by anything. Well, I can, it just won't really help. But what I could do, I could divide both of them by this 3. You see, this 3, it's kind of like it's glued up against this C here. I almost think of uh, algebra like uh, peeling an onion. You try to go from the outside, you know, the furthest away from the letter you want, and sort of, you know, make your way in. In this case, we've just got one thing glued up against the C. We've got a 3 here. Now, I wish this 3 wasn't there, because then I'd have C by itself. So if I want to get rid of the 3, I can divide both sides by 3. So 3 divided by 3 would give me just a 1. That's why it disappears. And then I have C equals 2 over 3. Now your answer is easily allowed to be a fraction. There's nothing at all wrong with having a fraction as your answer. Now we can do another one. Uh, maybe something this time with uh, dividing. Maybe I could say, for example, that... Um, yeah, I could say, for example, Q divided by 8 equals 7. A nice simple one like this. Again, I want Q by itself, and it's being divided by 8. So in order to get rid of it, I have to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So if I multiply both sides of the equation by 8, that'll get rid of the 8 on the left side. In other words, I'll say that Q is 7 times 8. And therefore, Q equals, hopefully you remember what 7 times 8 is, it's 56. There. Now we can also do some more complicated ones. So um, I'll do a little bit of a combination one here now. So what if I do, for example, um, something like... 3x plus 2, maybe equals 5, like this. So if I want to do something a little bit more complicated looking, that's no problem, I can easily do that. I just got to think about how to peel away the onion, so to speak. In other words, I could divide by 3 right away, or I could add or subtract 2. The question is, which one should I do? I'm actually going to choose to first of all get rid of the plus 2. That's why I talked about, you know, sort of peeling the onion. This is the x I want to get at. This one's glued right up against it. So this is one term, this term is 3x, but there's a whole other term, this plus 2 is a separate term. That one's easy to ditch and put to the right. So for example, I'm going to write, well, 3x stays there, but the plus 2, I move it to the right, that means I subtract 2 from both sides, therefore I get uh, 5 minus 2. So I can say then that 3x equals 3. So far, so good. Now I want to get x by itself. How do I do that? I get rid of the 3 by dividing both sides by 3. And if I do that, I end up with 3 divided by 3 for my x. And then I can conclude, this is a commonly used symbol for therefore, so x equals 3 divided by 3, which is 1. And you can check, does this really work? Put in a 1 here. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. Does that equal 5? Yes. So we know we've done it right. So see, that's how you can do algebra. You can do any combination of anything. Now sometimes it may look even more complicated, I and mean, maybe you're trying to find, for example, um, x squared equals uh, 25, for example. And then I want to try to find out what value of x makes this work. And I can still do this. All I have to do is think, what undoes an x squared? And it turns out square roots undo squared. So for example, if I take the square root of both sides, square root of something squared means I'll just have an x left over. So I would say x equals the square root of 25. And that means what number multiplied by itself twice gives you 25, and it turns out the answer is 5. We should be very careful, actually. We should technically say plus or minus. We'll be talking about that a little bit later on. But uh, it should technically be plus or minus 5, because I could have a minus, and a minus, if I squared it, would give me the same thing. 